So um, my ancestors, uh, intellectual ancestors, uh, stems from uh, the contributions of Franz Fanon, who uh, was a uh, 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 theoretical uh, and also a practical fighter against oppression in uh, Algeria. And uh, he wrote uh, prolific about oppression. And Alvaro Vieira Pinto, uh, a Brazilian philosopher, built upon his work and developed a, a cybernetic theory of oppression, which was unfortunately not published in the 70s, and it's been discovered in the 2000s only. Uh, he heavily influenced Paulo Freire, who's perhaps better known, and also Augusto Wall, who's a, a, a theater dramaturg. And um, my, my talk now is a very short uh, remark on the, this understanding of systemic oppression that stems from these authors. They basically describes uh, oppression as a contradiction between uh, a historically privileged social group, the oppressors, and a historically underprivileged social group. The oppressors are doing their, their things and the oppressed are re reacting that, to that. So it's um, a cybernetic loop, as you can see. The oppressors try to dehumanize, underestimate, prescribe what the oppressed should do. And the oppressed uh, try to rehumanize, react, and criticize what the oppressors are doing. And I've been developing with my uh, research collaborators this notion of user oppression to uh, take hold accountable designers in the <laughs> systemic oppression. So designers, they have privilege over the means of production and they shape those means of production, the artifacts that we live by. And they uh, uh, willingly or unwillingly, they oppress users, which are historically underprivileged social groups. So you are, it's difficult to find uh, black designers because they are oppressed people and therefore they become users in the user, uh, in the handiness uh, relationship. That's how we call it in a broad perspective. Uh, but there is this role of technology or any kind of artifact mediating oppression and uh, um, um, sometimes amplifying the reach of oppression. And systemic user oppression will be uh, uh, how the users reproduce this oppression by their own. So they take the position of the oppressors because sometimes these technologies, these artifacts, these systems, they have biases that favors up the oppressor's behavior and they oppress another user. Uh, for example, uh, a white user who is oppressed in the handiness relationship might become an oppressor in a, a racial relationship and use um, a social network, for example, to oppress black users. And, but the oppressed users, they unite, they organize, and they uh, try to uh, fight oppression. And that systemic user oppression does not mean that oppression is uh, total. It's, uh, there's always some place for resistance. And if we uh, understand systemic oppression this way, for sure, systemic design will not be changing the artifact or the system itself, because it's all about the relationship between the people. Uh, Vieira Pinto wrote extensively that you cannot take the human outside of the loop if you want to understand cybernetics. And to finalize uh, with some words of uh, Vieira Pinto, I would say that systemic design can only contribute to dismantling oppression if uh, the oppressors are being held accountable uh, while uh, supporting the oppressed. So there is always, uh, the system is not the oppressor, right? So you should not mistake the tool of the oppressor by the oppressor. <laughs> There's always someone behind the system take the most benefit from it. And systemic design must criticize and find and make visible the oppressors and also uh, make them accountable for what they have done in the past, but what they are doing in the present and what they will probably do in the future if the current biases in the systems are kept the way they are, it is. So thank you very much.